Here we go. Distributed property is our topic. Like I said, we're going to kind of uh, go a little bit more in depth in terms of distributed property, but you all know what it is, okay? So, if, for example, if I have A times B plus C, like this, right? This is when we distribute this A. Can somebody tell me what I get? Data. AB plus AC is exactly right, because what we do here is what? We multiply A times B and C, right? B plus C, so A times B you get AB plus AC, like you said. Uh, is it okay if I write it this way, where A is after the parentheses? Actually, it doesn't matter, because remember, multiplication is, has this nice property. What sort of property does multiplication have? Yeah, community, community property. property. So, do you think we're gonna get the same answer? Yes. We better. So what's A times B, guys? A, B. A, B equals plus C, A. Now, of course, I could rewrite this as A, B plus A, C using, again, the community property of multiplication. So sometimes it's written this way, sometimes it's written this way. You could rewrite it with A first if you like, right? If I give it to you with parentheses B plus C times A, you, don't, you could just rewrite it this way, right? It still works. Any question? This easy? And this is so, you know, the, the way that you've seen before. Uh, like I said, we're going to make it a little bit more interesting here, okay? And see if you could recognize how we're using distributed property. All right. By the way, one thing you got to be careful when you're doing distributed property, let me ask you this. So, we just talked about distributed property. What do I get when I have this? A times, parentheses, B times C. Yeah. A, B times A, C. A, B times A, C. That's how you get it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> why, why not? Why, so I put a big X through that. I said, it's just A times B times C. It's not A, B times A, C. Why not? Why don't we distribute A with B and A with C? Uh, Roy? Ro Royce? Um, right. In other words, Chris, did you want to add something to this? How is this different? Why don't we distribute this time? Uh, one person see it? What's the, uh, yes, how about uh, Samuel? Because of order op op operation, what do you mean by that? Okay, yeah, you have to multiply B times C first and so forth, yeah. And, and you see the big difference here is that, all, look at all the other ones that we just had here. Uh, A times, in parentheses, B what? What operation did you have between these two numbers? Plus. Plus. These are terms, right? How many terms do we have? Remember terms are separated by addition sign? How many terms do we have here? When you have B plus C? Two terms, right? How many terms do you have for this one when you have uh, B, C by multiplying together? Just, how many terms? Well, just one. Do you see any addition symbol at all? Because terms are separated by an addition sign. So look, how many times did we multiply this A with B plus C, with two terms? How many times did we multiply A? A, we multiply A with B and, twice, we did it twice, okay? If you have two terms, guess what? You're gonna distribute this A twice. Guess, what if I have three terms? Guess what, when you distribute, in other words, if I have A times, B plus C plus D, guess how many times you gotta multiply A? Three times, three times. If you have three terms, you're gonna multiply A three times because you have three terms. What if I have 10 terms? You gotta distribute this number 10 times. Does that make sense? Here, I only have one, I only have one term, right? So it's just, for example, please, like whenever I talk about distributed property, people try to distribute this. This would be wrong. Like for example, if I have two times, three times four, do I multiply two times three and then two times four? No. no, then you get it wrong. How do you do this one then? Like you said, you follow the order of operation. Jason? Uh, you do three times four. Yeah, you do three times four first. What is that? Five. 12, and then you do two times 12, right? And you get 24. <laughs> do you understand? So you don't blindly just distribute, okay? Just because there's a parentheses. You only distribute if you have more than one term inside the parentheses. For example, here we have two terms. Therefore, you multiply it twice, right? If you have three terms, you will multiply three times, and so forth. Yes, sir? What if we said A times B plus C times D? A times B plus C times D. Where's the parentheses there? Then you would have to distribute. So, in other words, inside the parentheses, if there's any addition, 
then you'd have to distribute, but you will multiply each other term with one of the other term. Okay? We'll, we'll get to some of those in a bit. Any questions? Yeah. Exactly. Division sign is actually the same as multiplying the reciprocal, right? So yeah. If, if, so if this was B over C, you still don't distribute, right? Only time you distribute is if you have an addition sign. What if you have subtraction sign? Do you still distribute? Thinking back to what we learned last time? Eric, what do you think? What if you had A times B minus C? Do you think we still yeah, need? Yeah, we still distribute because what does A, a B minus C really mean? Thinking back to the definition of subtraction from last time here. Uh, how about, uh, did it? A plus negative B, right? Subtraction is really adding the opposite, so you still have to distribute, right? Because if you have subtraction, it really means adding the opposite, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so please don't get these things confused. Be careful here, right? If you have just one term, right, you don't distribute. You just multiply as it is, okay? All right, let's move on to then some of the problems. So this is the kind of question that you will see tonight, and you may say, wait a minute. How is this, right? Why do they give this sort of problem when we're talking about distributive property? Because we all know how to multiply 6 times 48, don't we guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know how to multiply 6 times 48. But can somebody think about, this is how they sort of get creative. Why do you think they give us for distributive property? In other words, is there a way to use distributive property to actually multiply two numbers like this? Oh, some of you see it. Oh, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How about... Uh, Patty. Um, it's 40 times A and 6 on F Exactly right. So in other words, 48, you could rewrite this as 40. two terms. 40 plus 8. eight. And now, this is sort of a little bit nicer, right? I mean, but basically, when you multiply 6 times 48, this is what you're doing, aren't you? When you're doing multiple. But isn't this nice? Yeah. Spencer? Well, homework, you draw the arrows? Good. So homework, I want you to draw arrow and then write the product and then draw the other arrow and write the product. It looks like I drew two arrows at this, at this point, but I want you to draw one and then multiply the product and draw the other. Because that kind of shows you which one you just multiply, okay? For of course, when there are only two numbers, it's easy, but if you have like five, you know, I don't want to do myself. So of course you draw, draw an arrow. What's six times 40, class? Uh, uh -huh. Plus, right, addition stays the same. What's six times eight? 48. So it's 240 plus 48, the answer is? 288. Does that make sense? So very good question, Spencer. I want you to draw one arrow, write 240, and then draw the other arrow, and then plus 48, like that. All right. Is this the only way to do it? No. Actually, you could think of 48 as, in terms of subtraction, what could you do? What could you do in terms of subtraction? Instead of 40 plus 8, you could also think of this as, how about Samira? 50 minus 2. And 50 minus 2, isn't that same as addition? 50 plus negative 2? So could we do it this way if we wanted to? Yeah, that's fine. Both ways, it's, it makes it a little bit easier, doesn't it? So of course, what's 6 times 50? 300. 300 plus, what is 6 times negative 2? Isn't that negative 12? So what is 300 plus negative 12? Uh, Better get the same answer as before, right? We get 288. So uh, you could do either one of these methods, OK? You could either do it as an addition or subtraction. Uh, sometimes addition will be easier. Sometimes subtraction may be easier. Okay. Depends on what kind of numbers you have. Does this make sense? So on your homework tonight, I don't want you to just multiply the numbers together. I want you to distribute it this way. Is that OK? Any questions? Michael, are we, are we good? Okay, may I go on to the next one? Yes? All right. Here is example four, uh, two. It says 4 times 3.25. Okay, well, don't we know how to multiply 4 times 3.25? Yeah, we all know how to do this, right? But could we use this property that we're learning today? How do we use, okay, one person knows for sure. 2, 3, 4, 5. Kevin, what do you think, sir? Three plus 2.5, right? I mean, 0.25, I mean, you're right, not 2.5. 0.25, right? 3 plus 0.25, wouldn't that give you 3.25? Turns out there's an even easier way to uh, write. Instead of using decimals, what's easier to use? Instead of decimal, you could use? Uh, one fourth. One fourth, isn't that easier? Especially if you're going to multiply by four. So yeah, when you can, 
you should use uh, fractions rather than decimals, okay? It'll be a lot easier for you to do. Okay, and now, of course, go ahead and finish. It's, right, isn't this a lot simpler? Then actually doing four times 325, right? Four, I mean, four times 3.25, right? So what would you get here? Four times three class, what do we get? Four plus, right, plus stays the same. Four times one, four is one, exactly. And of course, the answer is 13. Does that make sense? So this is the way I want you to do your homework tonight. I don't want you to just write down 13 because you multiply 4 times 3.25 as it is, okay? I want you to use the property that we're learning today, which is what? Thank you, very good. Okay. Okay, let's look at example 3. This time I have a mixed fraction, 6 times 4 and 1 third. What does 4 and 1 third really mean here? Uh, Tawar? How can I rewrite this as an, a two-term expression? Uh, four plus one third. Exactly, four plus one-third. You guys remember that? Right, this mixed number four and one-third really means four plus one-third, and of course, we could do the same. You can distribute six now, okay? And I even drew this picture. You remember in elementary school, <laughs> right? Four and one-third really means you have four of the pies plus one-third of a pie. Anyway, go ahead, tell me what you get. By the way, look what I did here. I show my work by writing down, instead of doing this in my head, I wrote down 6 times 4 plus, 6 is really 6 over 1. You can think about it that way, right? Because I'm multiplying fractions together, and 1 third is 1 over 3. So uh, for like the ones that we did in the number 1 and 2, they were pretty simple. But as you uh, do more interesting ones, can you show this sort of work? before? Don't just, write it, uh, don't just multiply them in your head. Write it out. Okay. Of course, what is class 6 times 4? 24. Okay, what is 6 over 1 times 1 third? 2. 2. And of course, the answer comes out to be 26. Raise your hand if you got 26. Very good. Okay, I'm 100% participation. Some of you have... Oh, okay. Good. All right. Now, let me ask you something, though. Isn't 6 and 1 third... Uh, isn't this mix, is a mixed number? 6 and... 6 times 3, what's 6 times 3? 18. Isn't this 19 over 3? No, because what operation is between 6 and 1 third? Multiplication, right? How come then 4 and 1 third, this is an addition in the middle, not a multiplication? You know what I'm talking about? Here, 6 and 1 third, I can even get rid of that over 1 if you want. Right? How come this is a multiplication here, but here is an addition in between? Have you ever thought of that? Maybe I'm getting you more confused then. What, what? Do you see the difference? Six and one third. Why isn't this 19 over three? Why, why does this mean six times one third and get, and get us two here? Yeah. Because it's six over one. Yeah, but how come here is multiplication? How come here is addition? The operation between these two numbers. Yeah. Kind of. It turns out, look, if I did this, guess what this means? This will mean, yes sir, <coughs> four times one third. But if I don't have a parenthesis around there, guess what this means? Four plus one third, okay? So be careful here. This is one of those exceptions where normally when the two numbers are next to each other, like two x, two x means two times x, right? Now here, when two numbers are like this, if a number is uh, an integer like this, and you got a fraction, it really means there's an addition. Unless we put this, then it becomes multiplication. You see the little subtle difference? I just wanted you to understand. Is that okay? So mixed number, it really means, right, four plus one third. Anyway, okay, uh, let's move on to the next example. Any question on this? Okay. Let's take a look at example four. We got, again, uh, binomial, oh, sorry, two terms, an expression with two terms, three x plus four times two. Um, here, it's sort of different. How is this one different than the other one? Yeah. Yeah, it has variable, good. What else is a little bit different? Um, uh, Lindsay? It's on the other side. Yeah, the number that we're distributing is on the other side. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. So what do we multiply first? Who could tell me? How about, who haven't I called today? I haven't called, um, called you. Uh, somebody here. Uh, how about over here? Uh, Camilla, what do I multiply two with first? 3x, right? Isn't that the first term? So three, two times 3x, I want you to write it out. Right? 3x times 2 plus, of course, 4 times 2. Class, what is 3x times 2? Everybody? Six. What? 
Six X plus four times two clouds is eight. Okay. Any question? Yes, sir. Yeah, pl can you please write this step? Because um, I know some of you may think I could do that in my head. But like I'm telling you guys, as we as these things get a little bit more interesting, like they're gonna put some fractions and things like that in there, right? I want you to write this step out because this is a part where people mess up, the part where they do th do things in their head. But if you write it out, there's less chance that you're gonna mess up. Also, if you don't like the number that you're distributing on the right side, could we rewrite it this way? Here. Can we rewrite it this way here? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because of the commutative property of multiplication. multiplication. It doesn't matter which order you multiply, right? In this case, 3x plus 4 is your a, 2 is your b, right? Now I have b times a. So if I, of course, do this, then this is the, sort of the normal way that we're used to. And do we get the same answer? Of course. Okay. Does that make sense? So if you don't like it this way, just rewrite it. Not a problem. Right? Because multiplication is, right, has that nice property called community property of multiplication. All right, good. Any questions? Easy so far? Good, good. So I'll review, fine. So now, uh, I'm going to ask you this here. Um, let's say that I have this expression, AB plus AC. Uh, okay, um, Livy, is there another way to write this using the distributive property somehow? exactly right. Could we write it this way? In other words, could we go backwards? Yeah, this is what we're going to practice today. Right? How is it that we could go backwards? Because if you, is it true you could do this for every, like, terms with two, every expression with two terms? No. When does this only work? Hint, hint, look at what I highlighted. Okay, when does this only work? Um, Christina? When you have two A's. In other words, what do you mean by that? A little bit more specific. What do you mean by when you have two A's? Uh, anybody over here? How about anybody? Uh, Bella, what do you think? When you have two numbers, okay, when you have a common factor, right? You see how A is a common factor? A is in this term and A is also in the other term. If that's true, then you could rewrite this, right, using distributive property backwards. Does that make sense? You guys get what I'm trying to say? Because you can, so if I ever gave you this to you, uh, if I said, okay, give me a sec, let me try to hide the answer. Here. here we go. If I said, okay, write down, justify each step, and of course, first is given, what would you write down as your second step? How do I go from the first step to second step? What will be your justification or the reason why I could go from here to here? What would you write? One person's here? Two? Three? Carly, what do you think? You're exactly right. It's, it's because of the distributive property. So doesn't it mean we could go backwards for this distributive property? The answer is? Yes. yes. Just like last time we talked about what? What property did we talk about? What, what was the definition? Which definition did we talk about? Definition of? Subtraction. Remember we went backwards also? Right? So, so you could... It's, it's sort of similar to that definition of subtraction. We could go backwards also. Does that make sense? Okay, now I want you to all then try this. What if I had this? A, B minus A, C. Could you then rewrite this using distributive property? Go ahead, everybody try. Okay, so I cannot say really simplify this, right? Because this is already simplified. But can you just go back to what it was before we simplify this? Right? Does that make sense? Go ahead, everybody try. All right, who thinks they know how to rewrite this using distributive property? How about, uh, Aiden, what do you think? Um, a, B minus C. A? A, A, A times B minus C. Yeah, with the, where would the parentheses be? Around B and C. Exactly right. How many people got this? Raise your hand. A times, do you see how we could go backwards? Yes, is this easy or hard? Easy. Okay, if that's easy, let me, let's do an example that actually used this, okay? Uh, use this method. Okay, let's go to exam next example. Okay, keeping that in mind, they give you something like this and they say simplify. 23 times 26 plus 77 times 26. And you may say, wait a minute, how, that doesn't look anything like what we just did. And we know how to simplify. All you have to do is multiply the 23 and 26, right? And then multiply 77 and 26 using the uh, following the uh, order of operation and add them together. And how do you do it? 
why would they give us questions like this all of a sudden? Oh, some people say, good. One. I want you to discuss with your group. Go ahead, go ahead. Discuss with you. How is this, how is this distributed property? Go ahead, everybody try. Very good, a lot of you actually did it correctly. So, how is this uh, part of distributed property? Who could tell me? Uh, Carolyn, what did you write? That's the next step, what would you write? What would you write? I wrote 26 and then in parentheses, 23%. How many people did that? Raise your hand. Very good. Isn't this using the distributed property going backwards? Notice 26 is in both of the term, right? Remember this 26 is called factor, right? They have a common factor in both of these. So you write it this way, using distributed property backwards. Now, why, why is this a lot easier? Uh, Mimi, all we have to do is what? Oh, you distribute into 23 again? Then you're back to what you have before. Oh, okay, so what should I, what should I do? Now that I have this, how is this sort of makes this simp uh, expression, simplifying this expression easier? So then what are we gonna do next? Multiply, if you multiply, then you distribute this 26 back again, then oh, you're you back, add you add 23 plus 77, right? These are just numbers, right? Then we just follow the order of operation and doesn't this make it a lot easier? It happens to be that number is 100, so the answer, of course, is 2600, right? Do you see the kind of question they're going to ask? And do you see the kind of thing you have to do using distributed property? Does that make sense? Yeah. If you didn't do this, do you see how it would be a lot harder, right? You're going to multiply 23 times 26, right? If you didn't see that pattern. You guys get that? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So you'll see something like this for your homework tonight. All right. Oh, by the way, uh, if they ask you to justify each step, of course, this one will be what? Right here will be given. Okay. Given. And then, what would be the step here? What, what would you write for this one? Okay, this one is distributed property. We just talked. Yeah. Substitution. Substitution. Property. Uh huh. Property. Then, of course, last one again. It will be substitution. Why am I doing all this? Do you think you'll see something like this on your test? Yeah. Yes, you will. Okay. And we're going to have quiz on this also, right? Before the test. Okay. All right. Here's an interesting question. Example 6. They ask us to show that 7x plus 5x equals to 12x. And you may say, wait a minute. That's, what do you mean? We, all, we just know that it's 12x, right? Right? How do you show? That's 7x plus 5x equals 12x. Oh, some of you have an idea. Again, what are we talking about? What's our topic today? Distribute, distributed property. property. So using distributed property, is there, is there a way to show that 7x plus 5x equals 12x? Algebraically? Go ahead. I want you to talk with your group. Go ahead. Go ahead. Think about it. What do you think? Okay, so a lot of you got, as I walked around, I saw a lot of you guys have the actual answer at the end. Very good. So. How can we use distributed property to show that 7x plus 5x equals 12? Don't just write down, oh, it's just because it is. No, that's not how you, that's not showing. Okay, so uh, who haven't I called today? I haven't called, uh, oh, I haven't called uh, Aaron. What do you think? Exactly right. Isn't 7 plus 5x same as what? Using distributed property? What is common in both of these terms? X. So. You could write this as x times 7 plus 5. Now, could I have written this as 7 plus 5 times x? Would that matter? Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? You could. So, what's 7 plus 5, guys? 12. What's x times 12? 12x. 12 That's how you get 12x. That's how you show that 7x plus 5x equals 12. Do you guys remember uh, you learned something about gathering the like terms? Right? Yeah. Right? When you have 7x and 5x, they're like terms, right? You could add them together. What's the real reason behind gathering the like term? It's because of the distributed. distributed property. Okay, so now you learn why we gather the like term. It's because of the distributed property allows us to gather the like term. Does that make sense? Gathering the like term is sort of a shortcut, right? The real reason behind it is because of the distributed property. Right, Kali? Does that make sense? Did you have a question? Yes. No? You guys understand? So again, gathering the like term is really because of the what? Distributed, distributed property. property. Are we good? You guys get that? Yeah. All right, let's move on. Very good. So if you really got that one here, try example seven. Simplify. 
And this one is similar to the one we did before, but not quite because, as you can see, it looks a little bit different. Go ahead, everybody, try out. Oh, wait. Okay. All right. Uh, how about Eunice? Eunice, what did you do first? Okay, good. First, you distribute it to seven, right? To the, both of the terms. What do you get when you do that? Oh, 5n plus, 7n plus? That's right. And notice what happens. You all know that when you distribute a number, right? Look at the parentheses. What happens to it? Go away. We're done, right? Not quite. Some of you stopped here. Not quite. Because we're trying to simplify. You got to simplify all the way, right? So who could tell me what to do next? Uh, how about Sammy? Any, you see anything here? What should we do next? What can you do with 5n and 7n? What's 5n plus 7n? Exactly, 12n. But should I just write 12n or should I show the work as to why this becomes 12n? How, who knows how to show that work? This is what we're working on. I know that a lot of you know this in your head, but can you show this work? Sammy, you want to try? Um, like, um, like exactly right. I wrote down n afterwards. Is that okay? It doesn't really matter, right? Because community property multiplication. What's 5 plus 7 then? 12. That's how we get 12n plus 21. How many of you got this right? Raise your hand. Good. Any question? Not all of you had your hand up. Where, where did you go wrong? Any question? Oh, were you just tired? Not. <laughs> I'm 100 percent. Oh, you have a question. Um, so, can you show? Can you show that extra piece of work also? Yes, I want you to show that one in red. This is the part. I know that normally you could just write 12n, but at least for this section, try to do it this way because we're talking about distributed property. All right. Does that make sense? Uh, I want you to all try this one. Example eight. By the way, what's the answer for this? What's x plus x? We all know this. What's x plus x? 2x. Can you show the work? Why do we get 2x? And do you think it's because of distributed property? Yes, it is. But how do we get 2x? I don't see any numbers around this. Go ahead, everybody try. I'll give you time. All right, so uh, Brandon, what do you think? How is it that we get 2x here? A lot of us know that x plus x is 2x, but I don't see any numbers. Like, how, do, how does this work? Yeah, you have the invisible one. What does x really mean? 1x, right? The coefficient, you guys remember what they, these numbers are called? The number in front of the variable is called coefficient. So you get what? 1x plus 1x. Then what do we write? Uh, one person knows? What do we do next? How about, I want to ask Samuel Lee. Is it 1 parenthesis x plus x? Then you get the same thing as before. So actually, it should be the other way around. Uh, Camilla? 1 plus 1, you add the coefficient, right? And then x is the common factor. You could think about, because if you do it the other way, you get x plus x again. Then it doesn't show you why we get 2x, right? But what's 1 plus 1, guys? That's how we get 2x. Any question? OK. And real quickly, you, OK, 9x plus 5x is 14x. Would you all agree? These two e equation, expressions are called equivalent expressions. Because, write this down quickly. These two expressions are called equivalent because they have the same value, okay? So please remember, we could refer to these as equivalent because uh, they have same value, okay? So two expressions could be equivalent as long as they have the same value. And that's the last thing I want to talk about. Any question? Are we good? All right. I'll give you time to write, okay?